So without further ado, I am going to turn it over to Andre Common for today's session, uh, deploying and managing Ola Hallengren's scripts with PowerShell. And Andre is over in the Netherlands, and he is a SQL Server MVP. And Andre, ready to turn it over to you right now, if you are ready to go. I am. Yeah. Cool. And there we go. And Chrissy, if you want to hit record. I'm clicking show my screen just so you see, you should see it. it now. Cool. Well, All yours. good. Um, good morning and evening, what, whatever it is for you, everyone. Uh, for me, it's evening. And um, a nice thunderstorm has just broken out outside. So if you hear a lot of noise here, uh, that could either be the th thunderstorm or my cat who just demanded to be in the office with me 10 minutes ago and went to sleep and she might wake up and demand to go outside again and do that 10 times during this session. We'll see what, what they do. I, I bet people with cats recognize this, right? Um, so a little bit about me to start with. Um, let's see if that moves. Yeah. Um, this is me. I am, um, I, ooh, I work in, in IT since 1989, a long time ago already. My hair has turned gray by now. And I've worked with SQL Server for about 20 years. Um, I love PowerShell. I do th things with APS every now and then, or called PDW these days. Um, but also things like BIML. Um, uh, I, I guess you could say I like automating stuff a lot. Uh, to give you an idea, the, the, um, the job I work on right now, the um, department I'm in, is um, automating um, a replacement of hardware. So by the time we're done, we're the the IT guys are without our help in the weekend somewhere, are going to shut down a, a number of SQL Server clusters, the bare metal clusters, and they're going to change the role in SCCM and boot to new servers and fully automatic the uh, fully automatically they will pixie boot to uh, uh, install a complete new hardware as uh, install complete new OS. Uh, a new SQL Server version, then attached to the old uh, SAN, uh, get the SQL Server databases, data file and log file that were underneath the old systems, copy the master model and MSDB and start SQL Server. So a complete hardware, OS and uh, SQL Server version replacement while keeping all the settings and all the data fully automated. And, and I'm in the team that does that. And um, these guys that I work with know their stuff. They're they're not afraid of PowerShell. They they know how to um, uh, deploy Windows on raw, uh, raw iron and that kind, and work with SAN automation and that kind of stuff. So I, as a SQL guy, I'm a, a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I'm learning so much. I um, I'm enjoying myself over there. If you ever get the chance to work with uh, in systems like that. Uh, please do so. I, I noticed that um, especially in the SQL Server world, uh, PowerShell has had a slow start, but it's picking up crazy right now at the moment. Um, in, in a couple of years ago, I would mention PowerShell and they go, well, you can do that in T-SQL. Well, um, more and more I see people still go to PowerShell right now because uh, there's, there's no escape, right? <laughs> You're gonna have to learn it. Um, Something else about me, you can find me at uh, uh, on Twitter at Andre Kaman. Um, and um, if you want to send me an email, my details are all there. Uh, I work for a two-man company, so on the website I'm easy to find as well. And um, I think we'll put the code up there as well, and I'll also give it to Aaron. So there's uh, many ways to get the code, since I've heard that somebody asked for the code yesterday already. Um, without having seen it. It's going to be interesting. All right, this is um, what we're going to talk about. And um, for those of you who do not know Ola Hallengren or haven't used it that much, don't worry, I'm going to show it a little bit. For those of you who know Ola Hallengren um, uh, completely, don't worry, I'm not going to spend too much time on that. But I am going to show you a little bit so I can um, then show you how I automate all that. Um, after that, we're going to deploy all the Hallengren on a bunch of instances. Um, a bunch in my case is five because I have five empty instances on my little Surface Pro here. 
but I assure you this works on uh, 600 as well because we've done it already. And uh, after that, I'll show you how to write PowerShell script that go will go into the uh, uh, Ola Hallengren settings on your servers and get some information on uh, various jobs that are running. Uh, so you can report on that to see if everything is running and s is set up the way it's supposed to be. Um, and here we go with the first part, Ola Hallengren. Now, for, the, for those of you who don't know it, um, don't take my word for it. Here's uh, some endorsements from uh, some very well-known people in the community, Buck Woody and Paul Randall. Um, f my standpoint on this is very simple. I, in the in the old days, uh, like what, what should we say, five years ago, maybe ten years ago, everybody would write their own scripts. Nobody would trust anything that came off that silly internet, and especially where it goes, uh, uh, where you're talking about backup scripts, you write your own. Uh, every DBA has written his own backup scripts because you don't trust what other DBAs have done. Um, sounds a bit silly at the time, maybe it wasn't. Uh, there was a, a, a there were a whole lot of scripts around, but none of them did exactly what you wanted uh, it, them to do. And and these days that's not true anymore. There's so many good scripts on the internet that um, are built by somebody from the community and used by so many people. Uh, it will just do the job for you and you should not write these things yourself anymore because you'll just introduce errors that are uh, no longer in these scripts. They've already um, figured those out and, and fixed them and those scripts are better than what you what you could write potentially. Um, I, I wouldn't go through the trouble ever again by write, uh, for writing um, backup scripts. That's not needed anymore. So Ola's scripts are um, very easy to uh, uh, to get. You just go to um, uh, olahallergan.com. You download something called maintenance solution.sql and you run it on your instance, and it will install. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> to change a few things, um, not ma not much. The backup directory, so where you want your backups to go, uh, a central file server would be great for this, so to collect all your backups from all your servers in one place. Um, but um, the default in the script is on the C drive. I'm sure you don't want that. And the cleanup time is also null. By default, Ola is not throwing away anything, which I think is a smart default, but um, uh, you may want to set this to um, your... Um, uh, 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 time where you want to throw things away, like three days or ten days, it, it's up to you. Um, so you may want to set that before you run it. Now after that, uh, and the rest of the settings is actually quite uh, good by default. There's a, a few that um, I changed myself, but we'll get to that later. Now what it does is it installs a, um, a, um, a few store procedures in a table in master, and you don't have to have that in master, but that's what I do. And the uh, you get a few jobs, and don't worry, there are no schedules for these jobs. Nothing will start running automatically. So all you need to do is go in and click on the jobs that you want to have running, and give them a schedule when you want to have them run. So f fairly standard thing I see all the time: user database is full uh, every week, and a differential every day, and a, a log backup every 15 minutes or something. Um, whatever your preference, preference is, just set it up the way you want. Uh, just remember that once you run Ola's script, nothing will start running out of the box. You have to give it a schedule yourself. Like I said, nothing will start running. Don't worry about that. Um, what I um, what I do, and what we're also going to do here, is create a schedule, a standard schedule that works for what I need it for and then save it because I want this schedule on every server, not just on one. And I also don't want to deploy uh, all our stuff on every server and then go in there manually to give it a schedule. I obviously want it to uh, give default schedules to um, to all my servers because um, I know when I want, uh, I know what I want on all these servers, so I just make default schedules. Now. If you have larger environments, and by larger, um, I I ran into this with um, uh, around 
1,200 machines. And uh, the funny part uh, was where they, it, it was in, in like 400 um, active directories because it was for a hosting company. But um, the, um, I think you, you could already use this when you have five. So a larger, uh, take that with a grain of salt. Uh, assault. If you have more than one, um, I, I already want to automate things and not click on things. So you need to deploy uh, and update your scripts the script, the OLAS script to many machines and you want to maybe standardize your schedules and deploy those automatically as well and perhaps, and, and I've named this exception management and, and, and I don't mean this in the case of and as, as an exception as something went wrong but more as in something is configured differently for whatever reason. You've got a longer retention for your backups or a shorter one or your you have a really large database and you, you, you've changed the, uh, the backup a bit or you have a data warehouse that gets updated once a month so you only need a backup once a month so you've put an exception in. That's the kind of exception I'm talking about. So that's, that's what you want to at least know about centrally that something is not the way all the other, all the, all the other machines are set up. It's a, a good thing to keep an eye on that. Um, I run into a lot of situations where if you don't keep an eye on that, um, you just, somebody changes something in production for very good reasons, but you don't know about them anymore. And a year later, you just assume that something runs the way you've set it up a year ago, and it doesn't. And that could give you not such, not such pleasant surprises. So this is where the, um, this is very old already. Don't assume anything. Of, this is what uh, you can use PowerShell for. Just just grab all your information and have it in one place so you can see all the exceptions. And you don't have to assume. You don't have to um, uh, uh, assume how that everything is still set up the same thing, same way. It uh, you can just see. Now uh, there are some interesting defaults, in, and I see why Ola has done this. Um, I just changed them myself. There is a, a something called a change backup type, and um, this is something that all our scripts are very smart. They have smart defaults. So if you have a full backup, and after that you schedule log backups, um, everything is fine. But if you change your database from uh, full to simple uh, in the meantime, the recovery model, then you can't make, and then ch turn it back to full, you can't make f uh, uh, log backups anymore. You need to make a full backup first. Or if you introduce a new database and uh, you switch the recovery model to full, you can't just start making log backups uh, right out of the gate. You need to make a full backup to start. And all our scripts behave in such a way that it will make a log backup of every database that's in, um, in full recovery model except for when they need um, a full backup first, then it will just skip it. It won't try it and fail. Um, personally, I like this setting where you do change backup type to yes. The default is no. It will just skip the um, log backup until a full backup has been done. Start backing up the logs. But I like this uh, where it changes the backup type on the fly. So it comes the, the, the log backup job runs, it figures out that to, in order to do that, it needs to start with a full first. And then if you have set this to yes, it will just do that. It will just make a full backup. And then the next time it will make a log backup. Now, um, for, so, for s many companies will say, no, 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 we don't want to have full backups all of a sudden running in the middle of a day. We can't have that. Um, and some will say, yeah, that's good. I can't wait with the log backups until the full backup came along. Uh, I want to, I want it to make a full backup right away. This, this is different per company. Um, you, you choose. The default is where it, uh, the log backup will just wait until the, the full backup has been done. Now the, the other one is uh, compress the backup. And um, the default is null, where it just uses whatever you've set inside C and I've ran into many occasions where the default was just set incorrectly and it would use a, um, a compressed backup sometimes and a, uh, a not an, an uncompressed backup on other instances and then you want to change everything to yes but you have to go through this whole change process um, 
to get that done, uh, I rather have this thing set to yes. Just always make a f compressed backup. That that would be my preference myself. But um, so that's not the default. You want to change that. This is up to you, of course. All right. Now let's prepare our environment. I'm going to switch over to Management Studio. So that, as we all know, probably Management Studio is a bit hard to see every now and then. So I'll use Zoom it and try not to make everybody dizzy by moving too fast. But what I have here is five instances on my uh, Surface Pro. They're all empty. That's how I can run five of these things without my Surface Pro overheating. And I'll zoom out and I'll show you that the jobs are not in here. If I double click on Activity Monitor, you can see it's completely empty. Now, uh, like I said before, you can run um, OLAS script and it will create the jobs for you and then you create the schedule in it and you can script the schedules and collect them and I've already done that. Let's see if I can find the file here. This is my directory where I have my things. These are the instances. This is a, a script to reset everything. This will actually uh, uh, co uh, connect the ISO and uninstall SQL Server and reinstall it to completely wipe this demo environment. But that's not what this talk is about. Um, happy to show you, by the way. But um, we are going to go to scripts here, and here I have my um, this name I picked myself: um, uh, corporate default schedule. And I just have a oh, it will start the Windows Server 20 SQL Server 2016 Management Studio now. That'd be funny. Let's open it from here and not wait wait for that. Uh, and yeah, it even started it on a different screen so you guys can't even see it. Good. Uh, presentations, uh, not the DSC one, this one, scripts, and here's my corporate default schedule. And as you can see, this is, this is a very simple uh, schedule for uh, demo purposes, but I'm just making a full system, full backup of the system databases at midnight and a full backup of user databases at midnight. Uh, this is not what an actual corporate database uh, uh, backup schedule would look like most likely, but for demonstration purposes, I'm keeping this simple. And I want to um, roll out OLA on all my five servers and use this schedule. That's basically what, I, what my goal is here. What I also did is I've put maintenance solution dot SQL um, in here and let me open that for you because I have oop, let's use the right one. Something to show you in there. Um, here we go. Uh, this is completely standard. This is how you download it from Ola's website. Yes, you can see all the defaults are here. I have not changed a thing. Um, I am going to let my PowerShell script do that. I, I, I'm not going into the script and, and, and change it. So um, uh, that's my system set up. And let's see if I press the right keys here. No, not that one. There we go. I, I'm using a different than when I'm not on my uh, docking station, so. If you suddenly hear music, that's not part of the show. I pressed the wrong button. Um, so now comes the, the actual PowerShell part. We are going to deploy um, OLA to, uh, uh, to all these five instances that you saw. So first thing that I read, I, I thought this would be easy. Just uh, loop th uh, create a loop with this text file with all my servers in it, and then do it for each, and then execute the uh, the query that uh, that's in that SQL file, and you're done. Uh, unfortunately, that is not the case because Ola script and many other scripts that I've seen are full of Go statements. Now, um, many people run into these things many times, and many people will know that Go uh, can be a problem. Uh, what not a lot of people realize is that Go is not part of SQL. It is not SQL at all. SQL Server has no idea what Go means. It, this is a um, management studio thing. It's also, I think, in SQL command. It, that tool, the command line tool, understands it as well. But it's it's just the thing in management studio that will uh, make sure that your uh, queries get executed one at a time. 
Now the um, you can set you can see here how you can set that up in Management Studio. Um, if at some point your colleague next to you uh, uh, forgets to lock his workstation when he goes out to lunch, you may want to uh, go in there and change it. That uh, is uh, gives a funny effect. Change it to select, for instance, and from that moment on, all the queries that he's going to try, he or she is going to try to run, will fail. Um, and please don't tell anyone I said that. Uh, now, what you want to, uh, what what I did here is um, I'm using a, a few parameters, and uh, it's it's very simple. I have a, a SQL Server or an instance name that I feed a backup directory because I want to change that in a script. I have the cleanup time that I want to change and I have a schedule that I want to feed to the PowerShell script because I want the default schedule to be deployed as well. Now the, the only thing uh, that, that I want to point out here is the SQL Server has um, uh, some options above it and you can see there it, it says value from pipeline and that allows me to um, pipe in a whole list of SQL servers in one go. So I don't have to run this script over and over, I can just run it once and, and feed it a whole list of SQL server or instance names. Um, this is the script that um, demo, demonstrates how that would work, this is not the actual script, but you, as you can see there's the parameter again and there's three distinct um, sections here, begin, process and end. And it, it basically begin does something before the loop starts, end cleans up something if you want to, and all the magic happens inside process. Process just gets repeated for every SQL instance name that you feed in, and the SQL server variable will uh, change accordingly. That's that's all it does. That's um, uh, it doesn't get any more complicated than that. Um, and this is how you would uh, call it. I in this case, um, I'm just feeding it um, five uh, texts, and I say do something, and it will just uh, loop over them. But in my actual script, you will see that I have instance names, and it will do something per instance. Now, fixing that Go problem is also not that complicated. Um, what you see me do here on the uh, 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 top is I create uh, a collection and a um, just a string called script part and um, in in the third line you see me do uh, load up the maintenance uh, solution by Ola so that that points to the actual SQL file the maintenance solution SQL and I just go through each line and every time uh, I hit go I will take that section that I've um, uh, saved into script parts and I, I'll put it in a collection if I don't hit go, I will add this line to a script part uh, and add a carriage return. That's what that little uh, quote and thingy is doing. Um, this is basically all this does to it. You'll end up with a, um, a script collection that's made up out of script parts that you can run individually. Uh, the Script is actually in a little bit um, uh, more complicated than that because I've also added, as you can see here, um, I've taken that out of the previous uh, slides to not make it too complicated, but here's the ex uh, extra part that's in it. Um, I am also uh, looking for things inside the um, line and replacing them. So this is where I look for the backup directory. Uh, and replace it by the backup directory that I've uh, put in there and the same thing with the cleanup time. Um, uh, yeah, and the same thing with the cleanup time. So you can do m many more things and I'll show you later, but um, th these are the two that I'm doing here for demo purposes. Now, th and then the uh, execution becomes fairly simple. All you need to do is a for each script part in script. So you, you, now you ha you're going through the collection, you get all these um, script parts and you just execute them on the, on the system and it works. Now it works exactly the same as Management Studio. Now the, the Go statement, in this case, it has to be the only statement on the line and Go does support some other things. You can have a comment behind it, you can even have a number behind it where it will, in Management Studio, it will repeat the number of times that you've um, 
specified. Um, this is not uh, used anywhere in Ola's scripts, so I'm not too worried about that right now. This is this is not what I need it for. So I've not gone any further than just look at if I see go on the line, I'm going to skip that line and use the section before it as one section. Now let's look at what that script looks like. Um, that will be this one. Uh, is that this one? Yes. So what you'll see here, um, here is my um, Let's go to the home. Here are my parameters that you've just saw, uh, that you just saw, and I've got my begin section here that will load uh, all our script, and then here you see the code that I just demoed where I uh, split on on the uh, on the go, and I've put the variables in and add them to the script part if I'm when I'm done, and then. Uh, here's that process part I talked about. Um, once you're uh, once you're done processing, I can just um, so I've, I've I've pulled apart all our script in many script parts, and then I just make a connection to uh, the instance, and this gets repeated for every instance. So I I pull the script apart once, and then I process it for um, every instance that I um, feed into it. And it will just run all the script parts on the system, um, on all the instances. And I do an, another thing as well. If I enter a schedule, and this schedule is nothing more than a, a text file, uh, a SQL file with the schedule commands in that I showed you in a, in a previous demo on how to collect those. Um, if I typed the uh, location of that, it will also execute that. I'm, I'm not using any. Um, Go splitting kind kinds of technology there because there's no goes in that script. I made it myself. I know it's not there, so I don't need it here. Um, up up to you. If you um, my scripts are fairly simple, and uh, I have a very simple trademark on this thing. If if you um, um, uh, grab my scripts and create something and become a millionaire, please invite me to one of your parties. That would be cool. Um, that, that's about all the trademark I have on it. Do with it as you please. And then um, basically that's done. So uh, let's look at how this works. I call it with this uh, demo script, and that's this is the part where I grab the list of servers. Servers.txt just has um, my five instance names in it. It's just a list of instances, and then I uh, pipe this to install Ola, and I give it the backup directory here. Um, and let's scroll a little bit carefully, and then you'll see here that I've added cleanup time, and the schedule is just the location of the file I, uh, I that has the, C, the the SQL commands for the for creating the schedule. That's all I need to do. So uh, did I specify verbose? Yes, I did. So you should see it uh, running now, and uh, let me press F5 here. And there we go, underneath, you can see it go to my instance 1, instance 2, instance 3, number 4, and number 5, and that should be done. Now let's prove that that actually worked. Let's go to the job at the activity monitor. This one was empty before. Let me double click on that, and there you go. Um, let me zoom a bit, and then wait, hope that didn't go too fast. But as you can see, um, all I was installed on, uh, the maintenance solution was installed on um, on this instance, and it and two, the, the, the schedule is there. You, you can see the uh, second and the fourth uh, job have a schedule. The next run has a date, and just to prove that it didn't just do one. I'll grab a random other one, um, and as you can see, it happened here as well. So here you go. We've deployed Ola on a bunch of servers. So far, no, not much magic, right? And that's the whole idea of PowerShell. That it shouldn't be that complicated. Um, once you've um, played enough with PowerShell, you've um, the the learning curve for me was a bit weird. And in the, in the first hour, I thought, oh, this is easy, this is nice. And then you run into all the 
weirdness where PowerShell just infers things and tries to read your mind and, and gets it wrong because um, I have no idea how to tell it what to do yet. I, I fell into a lot of traps. I, I seem to get, um, get a hang of it now. Now, um, the third part, um, we also want to go back into, uh, once we've deployed it, we also want to go back into um, uh, uh, all our servers and see if our settings are still correct, see if we have um, configuration creep at some point. We don't want that or we at least want to know about it. So let's uh, see what that looks like. The, uh, the thing I'm doing here is I am going to all the backup jobs and I just do that in SQL. So I connect to all the instances and I just grab the command line, the, com the, 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 the command that Ola puts into his jobs. And the problem that I ran into here is that you need to parse this and it takes a bit of puzzling on, on what to do because the sections I need are, uh, for instance, the directory name and the backup type and the cleanup time um, and I need to parse that out of these commands that I see. So what you use is a split. Um, if I just split it on the add sign, I get one array and it will have seven items. Well, it is close. I can see it split it in the way I want it to. I, won't, I wouldn't need the first item, but the other ones are interesting. So I'll, I'll split it some more. And you can do that in one go. You can just go split, dot split, and, and you, you can go crazy here. And this is already more like it. I see the values and the keys that I need. The item one would be the, the key, for instance, databases, and item two would be the value of that uh, item one, user databases. And it still has some quotes and a comma. And, and this is not really easy. I'd have to do a, a bit of a weird loop to get my uh, key value pairs out of it here. So what I end up, ended up doing is go one step back and um, sp split on the at sign and go through it in a loop with a for each. So I get many tiny key value pairs with where the item zero would be the key basically and the item one would be the value. So item zero in this case would be log um, no, let's start with the second one. Uh, yeah, the second one. The first one I, I don't, I didn't use. Oh, haha, rookie mistake. I'm actually pointing to my monitor, but nobody can see that. <laughs> um, the, the item zero in the second key value pair is databases, and the item one is user databases. So that's the information I would need, and I, I'll, I'll get uh, key value pairs for each of them. So inside the for each, I can uh, grab those values. That is what I'm doing here, basically. So if you, if you look at the top um, line where, it, uh, where I try to match on databases, um, I'm just grabbing those key value pairs. And I'm, I'm, if, the, if, if I find databases in, in item set and then 0, so the, the first item in the array, then I'm grabbing the value out of the second um, value in the array, item set one, and I'm splitting that on the on the uh, quote and grab the second uh, value, the, the one. It starts at zero. Let me go back so you can see if you go to the second pair where it says databases at item zero, it will say quote user underscore databases quote comma at item one. And if I split that on um, the quotes I will get null uh, or empty I'm not sure and then user databases without the quote and then comma so that will be three values and they would be numbered 0 1 and uh, 2 and obviously here I'm interested in number one and that's what I'm doing here I'm grabbing those values and when I'm done um, and you'll see that in the code later I'll uh, create this um, collection again where I just put the values um, uh, in, a, in a collection so I can uh, use it as an, an actual PowerShell object and query them, uh, which I'll show you later. Um, no, in fact, I'll show you now. <laughs> so I'll go back to my script and here is my process job script. Now I'm doing some things up here where I'm just 
this is something I, I, I got used to doing. Uh, there's In the meantime, there's easier ways to do this. PowerShell 5 just has a function for it, but this will work in PowerShell 3, where I uh, create this function, and I call it PS script root. And I didn't create this myself. I stole this off the internet. And this allows me to dot source, where I just basically include um, scripts that are in a subdirectory of wherever my script is. So I don't have to worry about starting my script from a certain directory. I can start this from anywhere as long as the scripts are in the subdirectory of where my script is. That makes it um, easy uh, for me. Now, same thing with the instance list. I'm getting the content of the servers.txt from this, the same directory of where this script is. I don't, I don't have to look at that. And then I'm creating the uh, the object again, or the uh, array, and then I'm just going through all the instances. So in uh, this is just for demo purposes to show you that it can be even simpler. I used the pipeline in the previous demo. I'm not using it here. Um, like I said, whatever you do with my scripts, if you want to normalize this and don't use the pipeline at all, or or put the pipeline stuff in here as well, whatever you want to do is completely up to you. This is just a uh, to demo how you would how you could approach this. Now what I'm doing here is I'm um, using invoke SQL command two to uh, do this query on the database. Now there's a built-in built-in um, there is a command as uh, available that's called invoke SQL command, and I'm, I'm I'm not even sure if that's the case anymore. But um, in the beginning it had a bug, and the timeout just wouldn't work. It it would be 30 or 60 seconds, I think 60 by default. And if it you was change it, in 2012, Andre. It was, uh, it was fixed a while ago, I just heard. <laughs> okay. I'm just so used to use this one. Um, and, and, and Invoke SQL Command 2 is actually maintained uh, pretty well. Oh, here's my cat wanting to go out. I'll let her out before she starts screaming. Okay, bye. She'll come back in, in five minutes, probably. Um, uh, so I've 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 grown a, a, attached to the invoke SQL command too. I like it, but uh, I've just heard that you can just use invoke SQL command. It's fine. The um, I'm just doing a query here, and it will get me those uh, commands, and then I'm going through every um, row that I'm getting back. And this is the split that you just saw in in the for each, and here I'm splitting that again. Uh, on so to get the key value pairs, here's that. Uh, stuff that you just saw in my uh, slides to um, to get the values out of it and to split it again to uh, remove the quotes and the comma and then here you will see the properties and me adding it to the object uh, so I can query about it now uh, um, on it now I have a PowerShell object that I can just query so like you can see here I'm just um, uh, getting some values and I'm formatting it as a table and if I run this you will see it go out to let's press F8 here um, my, uh, it won't interesting why not uh, that's interesting oh I'm not okay I'm not showing it let's do this And now I pressed F5. Oh, rookie mistake. Good one. Um, and if you do a scroll a bit up here, if if you do a, a, a demos and you select a little bit, of course you need to press F8. I just pressed F5 and ran everything. Um, but that's fine. Here, here you can see on the top my uh, result set that came back from all my servers, and it has all the uh, information that I just uh, parsed from the job. So I. Um, I can now. What I can do is uh, see if I have anything that's out of the ordinary. And since I just rolled it out, nothing has changed. So let's just take, for instance, what do I have here? This is number four. If I go into um, the user database, the differential. I just crop the differential and go to the steps. It's a bit hard to see. I'll zoom in quickly in a sec. Now what I'm doing inside the job here, I'll zoom in, there's the cleanup time and I'm going to change it from 72 to, what should we do, 36, but I'm going to make it lower. 
And so now one of my instances is lower. Uh, save this and go back to my PowerShell. Now, if I want to uh, show you that, I, will, I can do this where uh, cleanup time is less than 72. This is just a PowerShell object, so now I can just um, query the thing. And I'll press F8, here we go. Interesting, the F8 didn't do anything. Huh. Okay, funny. All right, let's just do it this way. Um, never mind the error, I'll explain what that is in a second, I know what that is. But the um, um, what you're seeing here, the second result set that you see here is uh, this one is my query that I just did. I just basically said, here's my list of servers, go to all of them, uh, fetch me all the backup commands and tell me where the cleanup time is not 72 because I want to know. And then you just get, um, in my case, oh, the differential backup type of OLA 4 is not the way you expect it to be. So you may want to look at that or uh, maybe you've, you've got an... Um, an exception table somewhere that you want to compare it to to see if it's the same and report if it's if it's not. But this is a way to keep uh, keep an eye on that. One um, that you saw go wrong now just a sec is because I exported something to Excel, and um, with one PowerShell line. This is not magic that I've done. I'll show you here. This is called uh, import Excel. And I, I've just been playing it for a while, and it's um, very, very easy and okay, quick. Can you zoom in a little bit? Uh, yes, I can. There we go. Uh, so this is GitHub, and it's um, import Excel. And I'll show you the URL. The URL is actually in the in the um, uh, deck as well. Um, but you install this on your on your system, and it gives you the ability to uh, export result sets from PowerShell to Excel with one line, and you, you a little bit of um, uh, influence on, on on what you what you do there. But the whole idea is that you are not too worried about what the Excel looks like exactly. You don't want to have control on everything. There's actually some quite powerful features in that it can create pivot tables on the fly and whatnot. But I really like it to report on, on something where, um, as you can see here, I just do export Excel. I give it a path and a worksheet name. And I just say auto size, auto filter, bold top row, freeze top row, and show. And that just shows Excel. That just opens Excel. You wouldn't use that in production. Um, you would just leave the show away. And the funny thing is, here is, you, okay, that exports a, um, a PowerShell um, object to Excel. But what if you want to have... Um, multiple tabs. Well, just do it again, but give the um, give it a different um, PowerShell object and give it a different worksheet name, and it will just attach it to the same PowerShell. Uh, so, sorry, the same Excel sheet. So, uh, if you want to have a, an Excel sheet with multiple tabs with lots of information about your system, uh, just just um, run whatever PowerShell you need and feed it to this export Excel one tab at a time, and it will all end up in the same Excel sheet. I thought that was a pretty cool um, thing to do. Let me zoom that in a bit. And as you can see, this is what it made of it. Um, this is all, it, it's auto-sized, as, as I um, showed you in the um, uh, parameters that I got. Auto-sized, it, there's filters on it already automatically. Oh, let, let's show this one is better. Um, there's, so there's a filter here. This is all done automatically. And also the top row does not scroll out of out of range. You can still see the top row. And this is all with one command. I thought that was a pretty cool and, and neat way to, to do that. Now if I close this, just to show you the um, the second uh, thing, if if I do this again and this one um, another uh, tab and uh, run this again, it will start Excel, and if I've done that correctly, 
No, I haven't. Haha, <laughs> good. Um, never improvise in a demo, right? Okay, I I probably forgot an option here. I've just played with that and put it in last minute. Cool. Um, I've I've seen it work. It does it does do that. So you can um, maybe I should name something else different. Okay, I'm not going to try to fix that. But um, I thought that was a pretty cool way to do that. And uh, you can just add as many tabs as you want as soon as you figure out which command you need. Probably not worksheet name. Anyhow, um, would that be tab name? Table name? Oh, no, probably not. Anyhow, um, back to here. So um, that was that was basically it. This is this is um, um, it. It. I th I thought at first, oh, that must be so easy to in, uh, export uh, to to install all the Hollingren stuff on all my machines and and just report of it. And then I ran into these. Uh, um, this problem with these goes and and that we had splitting um, and I, I thought that would be uh, cool to show you um, because it it's it's not that hard to get around these things in uh, in PowerShell I, I think for me it's the if, if you have more than one server why would you not learn PowerShell right I I, I, um, I, I think I saw a, a blog post from somebody the other day that said oh yeah I um, I really don't like it when people go and make complicated things like with PowerShell. I thought, ooh, <laughs> um, it's not that complicated, but I do, I do get it. There's a, there can be quite a learning curve there. Um, the, these are the three resources that I've used. This is allahollandgren.com script and the uh, import Excel function, and then um, the invoke SQL command two with that uh, that I'm using. But you can use invoke SQL command if you want. And then I I have this slide up with questions. But you mentioned that you were answering questions when they come in uh, when you're typing. Oh, we've already got some in the queue for you, Andre. If you want to dive in okay. there, I'll go ahead and read you the first one. Uh, right. it, how do you change the cleanup time from null to a specific time if you've already run the script with the default parameters? Um, so what you could do is because the the cleanup time is in the jobs, so you may want to uh, run something that deletes the jobs and recreates the jobs. That um, or uh, you, you could you could uh, parse the um, you could parse the the the, the whole s uh, string and then change something and change change the job. It's just SQL basically. Uh, but the the uh, I, I guess the easy way would be to just delete the job and re um, uh, recreate the, uh, the the default schedules on it if you if you want. There um, uh, there are even a, a lot of scripts out there that can do this for you, where you can just uh, change uh, a, a job, but it will keep the default schedules for you. Um, I'm not I'm not sure which one I would take. Probably because I don't want to. Uh, uh, I want to I want to be able to change all the schedules the way I want it. I want to have exceptions there, and I don't want to figure out what they were. So I would probably. Uh, grab the command, change the um, uh, 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 text, and then submit that through a query. Just change the command in the job. All right. Uh, the next question was: uh, We would need to feed in schedule start times per server. Would that be easy? So different um, schedule start time per server. Yeah, so I, I, my, my solution here is fairly simple, but that only works if you have uh, limited amounts of schedules per uh, if for your environment. I just had the one that you roll out over across everything. But if, if you have different start times per server, because you want to stagger your backups, for, for instance, you don't want to have, have them happen ev um, every night at the same time and overload your uh, network bandwidth and that kind of stuff. Um, you can have uh, a, a simple thing like groups of schedules where you um, ha have slightly different timings in those schedules and just run uh, different uh, different scripts on different servers. Or um, uh, uh, what you can also do is uh, create PowerShell that will, instead of, I did the easy part, I just run the script, but you can also um, 
create those commands uh, in PowerShell that will create the schedule for you and feed that to SQL Server. So I would go with that probably. If you if you really have different times per server, you might want to have like a text file or a table somewhere that has these times that you want to have stuff to start and, uh, and just build your own schedule um, queries from there. They're, they're just queries. You can just build your queries in uh, PowerShell and, and, and then execute that uh, towards the SQL Server. So my solution was the easy one. I just grab the file and go. Um, but you can build it yourself. <laughs> All right. Uh, the next question we have for you is: If there's a version change to all the scripts, do you have uh, do you have to update your scripts? Then, wouldn't it be super nice if your script could download the latest version of all the scripts? Yes. Um, the the cool part is you uh, the um, so uh, Ola if. Um, Oh, if if you get a new version from Ola, uh, you can actually um, roll it out on a test system and get. Uh, and I've been playing around with this. This is not in my script yet, but um, I, I've ran into this in a situation where every change, even though I had automated it and it was tested, every if I wanted to change something, I had to go and do a change request per server, and that was a nightmare. Um, so querying is fine, but changing is not. And I only wanted to change what I needed to change and just no, not overwrite even if it's the same that would already be a no-go and what you can do is get um, a hash for the um, stored procedure that Ola uh, releases in your master that puts in your master database and compare that hash to what you have on your servers you can just grab that hash with uh, with a bit of PowerShell and compare it so you know which servers need a new version and and then you can decide to overwrite those how does that sound? Got it. Right. Sounds good. All right. Um, and do you have the do you have your um, scripts already uploaded somewhere yet? Uh, not not yet. I'll do that right now. I've, when um, as, as um, if you can tell me after this is uh, done where I need I can you put can them. You can send it to me. Uh, we might have emailed in the past. Uh, if not, I can just tweet you real quick my email address, but it's Lamare, but that's kind of hard to spell. Uh, and then I'll post it to sqlps.io slash code. Sounds good. I've got your email address, Chrissy. That's oh, okay. Alrighty. By the way, very pleasant accent. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I, I had a, this, I was in London for a conference yesterday and somebody says, you sound Irish. And I, I thought, <laughs> no, I don't. Come on. And another one, Went with American, and I. Uh, no, uh, no. Most people, most people say uh, it's slightly Glaswegian and a weird Dutch collection of <laughs> everything. I, I don't know. <laughs> For the Scottish people that are listening, I, I don't. You tell me if this is slightly Glaswegian or not. I have many friends in that area, so I could. 